generally Sri Mat Ramayanam is also called by Valmiki Muni as Sita Yas Charitam Mahatu. Though it is called Ramayanam, Valmiki Bhagavan himself gives another name to Ramayanam, saying that it is the great story of Sita Mata. And generally in Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam, they very beautifully give names to Mahabharatam and Sri Mad Ramayanam this way. They say Mahabharatam is Dudu Sendravanadi Yetrattai Pesuvadu, which means Mahabharata talks about the greatness of an emissary or a Dhuta who is none other than our Bhagavan Sri Krishna, who out of his tremendous love for Dharma himself volunteers to be an emissary for Pandavas and does not hesitate to represent Pandavas in the most Asat Sabha of Kauravas. Likewise, our Ramayana is also given, they also have given a wonderful name for Ramayana, that Sira Irundavalin Yetrattai Pesuvadu, the one which talks about the greatness of our Sita Mata who volunteered to become a prisoner for 10 months in Sri Lanka. And so Sita Yas Charitam Mahat. And our Ramachandra Prabhu also talks about Ramayana in a very different way. He says uh, it is the Charitram of Bharata. You see. Bharatasya Charitam Kuru, he says. Let me hear the greatness of Bharata through the story of Ramayana. And that is the beauty of our Ramayana. Each of the wonderful Kathapatram in Ramayana, whether it is Bharata Advara, Lakshmana Advara, Shatrugna Advara, or Sita Mata, or Kaushalya Devi, or Sumitra Devi, or Dasharatha, all of them show this tremendous ideal characteristics of either a father, or a spouse, or a son, or a brother, or a friend, or a sevak. If you take Anchanaya Swami, ideal sevak. We missed him yesterday, na? Because Anchanaya Swami, if you read Ramayana openly, in fact, it is very clear Anchanaya Prabhavam is even greater than Rama Prabhavam. Even Anchanaya Swami crossed this ocean to go to Sri Lanka via the aerial route. He just jumped around. But Ramachandra Prabhu, when he had to go to Sri Lanka, had to build a bridge, you see. And the, the, generally Mahatma said it is because our Anjaneya Swami had Rama Nama in his lips, which gave him all the prowess to do Rama Kainkarya. And if you ask Anjaneya Swami, how is that you managed to do all these things? He very beautifully says, I am nothing but an arrow discharged from the bow of Sri Rama. Ramachandra Prabhu's discharge arrow is what I am. And if you see, it's a beautiful example of how we all need to serve also. The arrow does not have a target of its own. It is directed by the archer, which is Ramachandra Prabhu. The arrow does not have a strength of its own. It is empowered by the stretched string of the bow of the archer. And the arrow of Ramachandra Prabhu always returned back to the quiver of Ramachandra. Likewise, a sevak after finishing seva immediately returns back to the feet of the master. So, our Hanumanji very beautifully says that the arrow does not have a sankalpa or intention of its own. The sankalpa is that of an archer. The strength of an arrow's performance is because of the strength empowered by the archer. And the direction in which the arrow goes is the one directed by the archer. And the fruit of what arrow attains is not for the arrow, it is for the archer. And after completing the seva, the arrow returns to the archer's quiver. Bridha service pananuma. That sankalpa of service should not be out of our own liking. It should be Bhagavad Prithyartam or Parameshwara Prithyartam or Bhagavad Kainkariya Rupam. Depending on whatever sampradaya we follow, generally we do that sankalpa saying, I am doing this for... The Preeti. Preeti means for the liking. I am doing this for the liking of Parameshwara. I am doing this for our uh, Preeti of uh, Narayana. Sriman Narayana Preeti Artham. So, Sankalpa itself is not for my ego. It is for Bhagavad Preeti Artham I do it. And while doing the Seva, we don't think that it is because of my intelligence or it is because of my prowess that I am doing it. A true Sevak, a person who knows truly how to do work, Yogaha, Karmasu, Kaushalam. A skilled worker would always think 
that the energy which he is getting, the intelligence which he or she is getting while doing the seva is derived from Krupa of Rama. And the final fruits of whatever I do is again offered back to Ramachandra Prabhu. That it is for, uh, you know, Ramachandra Prabhu's uh, arpana. Even in Niharati we sing, na, Tera Tujuko Arpan Kyala Age Mera. So the fruits are also offered to Bhagavan. And after each Kainkarya, the Sevak returned back and waiting for the next opportunity of Seva as an arrow waiting in the quiver of Ramachandra Prabhus. So likewise, Hanumanji is an ideal Sevak. And generally, a complete condom, a complete portion of our Ramayana is dedicated to Hanumanji. It is called Sundara Kanta. While the other uh, places in the other Kandas are named after either the place or the age of Ramachandra Prabhu, like Bala Kandam means younger age of Ramachandra Prabhu. Ayodhya Kandam happened in Ayodhya. Kishkinda Kandam happened in Kishkinda. Yuddha Kandam is because there is Yuddham. And of course, there is Aranya Kandam because the whole thing happened in a forest. But for Anchanaya Swami's prowess, it should have gone Sri Lanka Kandam only. Na? That's how Tulsi Ramayanam is named also. But then Valmiki Bhagavan gave a lovely name, a beautiful name, saying it is a Sundara Kandam. Why? Because everything is Sundaram in Sundara Kandam. Uh-huh. And it shows the beautiful seva of our Hanumanji and the prowess of Hanumanji doing incredible things which we can't even imagine. And finally standing with folded arms before our Ramachandra Prabhu without even a tinge of I did it. And when Ramachandra Prabhu said, I don't know, how can I ever repay what you did, says Bhagavan to a Bhakta. And the Bhakta is not enticed by the Saulabhya of Bhagavan. The Bhakta says to Bhagavan, if you had, uh, you know, willed, you would have got thousand Hanumans like this. But I have only one Ramachandra Prabhu. Na? So, even if you throw a little piece of straw and say, go find Sita Mata and come back, the straw will do the job for you. And it is a great Krupa that you gave me an opportunity to do Nama Seva. Hmm? The very uh, embodiment of humility. Which is the reason why we start with him and we end with Hanumanji in any Utsav. Anything we do, it starts with Ganapati Puja and it ends with Hanumat Utsavam. The reason being, the most difficult uh, thing in any endeavor is to somehow move from inertia of not doing it to doing it. The first movement takes a tremendous uh, uh, impetus. And that's why it's called Vigneshwara. The greater Vignam or obstacle is starting something, starting trouble soul only. <laughs> and when we finish something, generally we get a little bit of a tinge of, uh, you know, I did it, you see. And to completely take care of that, we remember Hanumanji as Hanumat Utsavam. To remind ourselves that all this is done by Ramakrupa. In fact, we are blessed. And we need to be grateful to Ramachandra Prabhu for giving us an opportunity to do such an Utsava. So that we all came together and relished the divine Leelas of Bhagavan. That is the reason why we start with Viswakshena Puja or Vigneshwara Puja and conclude it with Hanumat Utsava. Everything has a reason, you see. And that is our ideal Sevak. And such is Ramayana. It talks both about the greatness of Bhagavan and also the greatness of Bhagavatas. Together only we can get Prema. That's why our Shukamuni in Bhagavatam says, Yad Bhagavata Mahatmyam Bhagavat Bhakti Vardhanam. When you listen to the greatness and sweetness of a Bhagavatas life, we not only get love towards the Bhagavata, in fact, a Bhagavatas life inspires love towards Bhagavan. You see. And that is the reason why our uh, Valmiki Bhagavan completely allocated an entire condom for our Hanumanji. And Bhagavan being Dharmasya Prabhu Achutaha, Bhagavan loves Dharma so much that it is said, Vakta, Karta, Abhirakshita. Bhagavan does everything possible for Dharma. He is the one who revealed Dharma, he speaks Dharma. And he himself follows dharma and hence he protects dharma also. And whenever there is a little bit of a you know, uh, downtrend in dharma, Bhagavan himself descends to uplift dharma. Because dharma is his prana. Huh? And that is the reason why our Ramachandra Prabhu's avataram is to uplift dharma. 
and uh, there is a very beautiful uh, slokam uh, there was a great mahatma called ramabhadra dikshitar and he had tremendous love towards ramachandra prabhu and he has written beautiful shlokas celebrating ramachandra prabhu in the most uh, rasomaya way in that he says veda vedye pare pumsi jate dasharatatmaje वेद प्राचेत सासीत साक्षात रामायणात्मना इसे अवर रामायण इस नथिंग बट अ कमेंट्री फॉर वेद माता इट इस वेदार्थ उपब्रह्मनार्था ये वेदस्य उपब्रह्मनार्था ये इसे सो वेद वेद्यन इस भगवान ब्रह्मम श्री रामचंद्र प्रभु एंड दैट वेद वेद्या विच इस परमो पुरुषा he descended as the son of dasharatha dasharatha atmaje and then looking at our ramachandra prabhu descending vedamata also descended through the lips of our valmiki in form of ramayanam so ramayanam is sharanagati veda or prapatthi vedam it talks about lot of things it talks about dharma it talks about bhakti it talks about prapatthi it talks about kaikarya All these things are there in Ramayana. Ramayana is Ramayana Mahar Navam Dese. Mahar Navam means it's a great ocean. If you get into it, you can't come out of it. Uh, to this day, there are devotees in our satsanga who don't want to read anything apart from Ramayana. Day in and day out, Ramayana Parayanam, Rama Guna Chintanam, Rama Dasa Guna Chintanam, and they are always like this. And uh, I have been with them. a few decades back there was a mahatma from sri vaishnava sampradaya and uh, he used to be constantly immersed in rama katha rama guna and he had the sakshatkara of rama near what is called as tirukovilur now tapovanam nirkliya near that place and uh, every day night he could not sleep because he was such a great mahatma he used to do what is called as mono acting of the entire ramayana You see, night. No, as that is smarana. Bhakti means smarana. That's why Bhagavan again and again says, you know what bhakti is. Apart from what the external observances are, in bhakti yoga, Bhagavan repeatedly says, "Mam dhyayanta upasate, dhyayanta upasate." Bhakti is all about having the unbroken uh, thread or unbroken oil flow, as they say, na dhara. of bhagavat chintana in our heart is really bhakti even if we do for 5 minutes then we can put a small uptick for that 5 minutes other physical activities we do like offering flowers offering incense offering deepam all are necessary preparatory steps for us to remember bhagavan in our heart at least for a few minutes you see all these are uh, supposedly uh, what do you call as uh, things which encourage us to remember bhagavan that's why our uh, ramayana also shows us that uh, you know when we sit down and read uh, ramayana again and again and again over time we can't help thinking about ramachandra prabhu everything happens around us will be associated with rama adu bhakti even if you are working in a most uh, you know busiest marketplace if things trigger the thought of rama it's called bhakti even when we are reading ramayana if you are not remembering ramachandra prabhu padichadukku punyam not bhakti anubhava you see if you read even one verse of uh, ramayana punya uh, whether you know or not you get punya punya thik you will get some palan but if you get the anubhava and understand what is the anubhava adik mel enna venum you see the joy of enjoying rama guna and uh, there was this mahatma used to constantly read bhagavatam he used to do mona acting every time constantly thinking about ramachandra prabhu idala vilakshana Uh, this is not to be copied this cannot be imitated and we can only fold our hands looking at such mahatmas i'm talking about very recently 50 years 60 years okay and many times in a mahatma does ramayana parayana the rama guna moves them so much that they will start crying you see and i saw the note the book which was a very old book where uh, that mahatma used to do ramayana parayana regularly the letters are all almost missing romba faint ah irukku letters when i asked their family why is this so faint they says tata aludu aludu padipar and the tears of his joy when reading rama guna has almost taken the you know even the printing a mangi poch you see such is rama guna anubhava 
and many times he says my grandfather used to pray to rama let me not get any bhakti anubhavam so that i can enjoy ramayana better each time i open this tapaswadhyay niratamna bala bala na i start getting tears i am not able to continue this rama rayana parayana so i used to pray to ramachandra prabhu let me not have any bhakti anubhava at all let me read ramayana and get the benefit out of like a shame so here our ramayanam Ra- says that when ramachandra prabhu himself descended our vedamata herself came down as ramayanam through the lips of valmiki muni you see so what is ramayanam ramasya charitanvitam ayanam shastram that shastram that scripture which has rama katha in it is called ramayanam ayanam also means pantha pantha means path so the path shown by ramachandra prabhu the path taken by ramachandra prabhu both is all ramayana you see and ayanam also means gamanam <laughs> which means approaching and going you know in the path so when you are reading ramayana you are already traveling the path of ramachandra prabhu you don't have to say i am reading then i will travel the actual reading and listening to ramayana itself is traveling in the path of ramachandra prabhu and then finally ayana means parmapadam veedu you see so ramayanam is the final goal of some mahatmas and one such mahatma is anjaneya swami when ramachandra prabhu says why don't you come with me to saketam vaikuntam hanuman ji says no if there is no rama katha there if there is no rama guna anubhavam there if it's only sada pashyanti surya i don't want to come i want to stay in this bhumi listen to rama katha enjoy rama katha enjoy rama gunam let me be here itself and that is the greatness of rama yanam ayanam means parama padam for people parama padam is rama gunam they don't want anything more than that they don't want to listen to rama gunam gunam so that they will get moksha adu kuda venda for me rama gunam itself is moksha dinirka there are some people you see so here our veda mata went on telling in her upanishads what is the truth what is that satyam adrishyam that which cannot be seen abhyavaharyam that which is not anything to be done or done practically agrakyam that which cannot be grasp uh, and alakshanam achintyam abhyapadesham blam pesita she says it cannot be explained it cannot be understood it cannot be taught it cannot be grasped ekatma pratyaya saram says upanishads now veda mata was very happy and proud that i have explained the uh, truth very beautifully until she saw that the same satyam gnanam anantam brahma has come down in form of ramachandra prabhu such a wonderful you know a bluish green form with kodanda mandita karam and our uh, veda mata felt very shy it seems and ashamed that i have not covered this part of it at all i never expected brahmam to take such a lovely form to come down as ramachandra prabhu when you are shy you blindly uh, put your uh, head down isn't it so veda mata put her head down and descended also in the process into the wonderful words of valmiki bhagavan and she came out in form of ramayanam and hence valmiki bhagavan himself says that this is vedas commentary upabrahmanam that it is a commentary of vedas if we completely grasp ramayana we have grasped the essence of vedas you see and so bhagavan decided uh, to descend and uh, bhagavan was busy talking with our uh, shri devi that it's time for me to descend blah kan pesin rupa and it is time for me to descend and i need to come down as ramachandra prabhu you come down as sita lakshmi and together we need to do a leela to uphold dharma now what is this dharma generally dharma is of uh, two types it's called samanya dharma and vishesha dharma samanya dharma na do samanyam nane kadingo that which is common to everybody is called samanyam that which is special is called vishesham samanya dharma we all know it's very easy samanya dharma is speaking the truth uh, and being righteous and showing compassion to everybody and understanding the law of reciprocity and uh, being able to control our senses to the extent possible and being very pure all this is samanya dharma hmm? shama satyam daya shanti tapas is all samanya dharma and vishesha dharma means developing love towards bhagavan by listening to his stories 
by chanting his divine names by singing his glories and by constantly thinking about uh, bhagavan and, and doing seva to bhagavan this is vishesha dharma and generally why it is called vishesha dharma is samanya dharma everybody will agree vishesha dharma takes tremendous punyam to even understand if i talk about we have to show compassion to everybody i am sure it will be 10 times more people sitting and listening because everybody wants to listen to that it's very normal for a responsible human being to listen but for people to come and listen about ramakatha koti janma punya sadhana sadhyam govinda mandala dasa mandala dasya it is taking tremendous punya to come and even listen to ramakatha in a vishesha dharma not everybody would be having the taste for reading Ramayana, listening to Ramayana, or chanting Ram Nam, etc. Why? That's why it is special, you see. And that's the reason why, without the Samanya Dharma's observance for a very long time, many Janmas, a person would not have the taste for Visesha Dharma of Bhakti. That's why Bhagavan constantly says that it takes tremendous Bhagyam. Bhagavatam says, do you know when you even know the word Bhagavatam, when you will get Bhagavatam in your hands, it is saying, Koti Janma Samuttena Punya Naivatu Labhyate. After Koti Janma of Punya, only then we will even understand there is something called Bhagavatam and it talks about uh, Parama Dharma, etc. So, Visesha Dharma is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam. Shravanam na listening. Kirtanam na repeating and uh, you know, chanting and uh, singing and reciting. And smaranam means remembering. When we constantly listen to something and when we constantly tell something, obviously the mind will slowly get gravitate towards remembering that which we talk and which that which we listen. And that is the reason why it is called a Visesha Dharma. Now here, our Bhagavatam and Ramayanam shows both these dharmas. Visesha Dharma, Samanya Dharma. Generally, people say Ramayanam is a Shastra which talks about the greatness of truth and Dharma. Ramachandra Prabhu is an ideal human being. Very true. No doubt about it. But here, our uh, Ramayanam also talks about Visesha Dharma. Na? Our Ramachandra Prabhu himself sits down and listens to his Guru stories. When Ramachandra Prabhu and Lakshmana Swami go along with Vishwamitra, there are chapters and chapters where Ramachandra Prabhu with absolute humility says, tell me, how did this Gan Ganga Avataranam happen? How did our Ganga Mata descend to earth? And he is sitting and listening to all the stories. Bhagavan himself. And our uh, Skandotpati is sitting and listening to Kartikeya Swami's story. So, Viswamitra told him all the stories and Ramachandra Prabhu is observing a Visesha Dharmam of listening to Bhagavad Katha. Who? Bhagavan himself. And then when he goes to Bharadwaja Ashram, Bharadwaja Rishi is telling him all the stories and he is sitting and listening. Above all, you know the greatness of Ramayana? The most important listener for Ramayana is Ramachandra Prabhu himself. When his two little children, Lava and Kusa, when they went into Naimisharanyam during the sacrifice, Ashwamedam, there our Ramachandra Prabhu himself listened to the entire Ramayana. Uh, extolled by our uh, own little children of Ramachandra Prabhu, Lava and Kusha, showing the observance of Visesha Dharma, which is Shravana. And so, without Dharma, Bhakti alone Bhagavan won't accept. For example, Bharata, out of his tremendous love, tremendous Bhakti, comes and surrenders to Ramachandra Prabhu and begs Ramachandra Prabhu, come back to Ayodhya in Chitragutam. But Ramachandra Prabhu said, your bhakti is real, but you are transgressing dharma because I can't transgress dharma. Your father has given a word that you need to rule for 14 years. And so bhakti without dharma, I am not able to accept. So you go back. So bhakti without dharma won't work. Bhagavan does not like it fully. And what about dharma without bhakti? <laughs> Can anybody ever equal Kumbhakarna in his brotherly affection? Uh, knowing very well that Ravana did something stupid, he went on telling, you are now calling for a sabha, you are now calling for a council after Ramachandra Prabhu was uh, knocking our doors to attack us. Why didn't you call us all when you decided to lift Sita Mata from uh, Panchavati? At that point of time, you didn't confer with anybody. You make a mistake, then you call all of us when there is a problem. 
And Kumbhakarna told Ravana, return back Sita Mata. He didn't listen. But then Kumbhakarna said, okay, dharma of a brother, I will support you right or wrong. Without bhakti. Rama bhakti iranda punuvano. So because Kumbhakarna followed dharma without bhakti, even that didn't have shobha. Shobhikala. And so here, dharma with bhakti is what Ramayana is saying. But then comes the wonderful blessings of Ramayana. That if we listen to Ramayana, even all the papa which we might have incurred by not following dharma is dispelled merely by listening to Ramayana. And there is the wonderful uh, palashruti, which is the fruit of listening to Ramayana. And so, Visesha dharma itself is enough for us to become a dharmatma over time. You see, that's why Bhagavan in Gita says, if you come and listen to Ramayana Bhagavata, Bhagavan considers all of us as devotees, bhakta. But are we dharmic yet? I don't know. Maybe I am not dharmic. Bhagavan says, you don't worry. The moment you enter the portals of bhakti, I shall make you a dharmatma. Shipram bhavati dharmatma, sashvat shantini gachati, kaunte gya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati. Here Bhagavan in Bhagavad Gita says, that very soon, my bhaktas will become dharmatmas. Now the question comes, Are you say, yeah, Bhagavan is calling somebody a bhakta, and then he is saying he will become a dharmatma. When you say somebody becomes rich, it means he is poor only. Na? So obviously, when you say, my bhakta shall become a dharmatma, means right now my bhakta may not be following dharma properly, but don't worry, it is my responsibility to make him or her a dharmatma. And he tells Arjuna, you promise me that my bhaktas won't be forsaken. You say, I take a vow, my bhaktas won't be forsaken, tell it. And Arjuna said, Krishna's bhaktas won't be forsaken. No Arjuna, even your bhaktas won't be forsaken. You can very well say, me, Arjuna, my bhaktas won't be forsaken. So here, our Ramayanam is very unique because... Rama wanted to, Ramachandra Prabhu wanted to establish Dharma. That's why he came down. Valmiki Bhagavan wanted to establish Rama Bhakti. That's why he wrote Ramayana. Otherwise, he would have written another Shastra, na, Dharma Shastra. If you take Smriti, Yagnevalke Smriti, Vasishta Smriti, all the Smritis are there. Chavana Smriti. There are a lot of Smriti, Spinet Smriti. Irke. If you read all that, it will tell you how to wake up, how to walk, how to sit, how to eat, how to gargle. How many times you have to gargle after eating a food, when you can eat the food, when you should not eat the food, right from how to go to toilet line the lark. If you read that, very a problem. You know, we cannot follow even 0.0001% of it and we take, you know, uh, umbrage or we take uh, sh shadow against, it's not all practical now. Practical, oh, Leo, is that Shastra, you see. What do we do? So, Valmiki Bhagavan thought, Telling everybody, be compassionate, be truthful, is going to be an appeal task. If I somehow tell Ramakatha, and if people can somehow get inspired by Ramakatha, they will automatically follow Samanya Dharma also. And so Ramachandra Prabhu's intention was to establish Dharma, and our uh, Valmiki Bhagavan's intention uh, is to establish Rama Bhakti. Once we get even a little Rama Bhakti, each time we want to lie, something in us saying, uh, if I am a Rama Bhakta, how should I, how can I lie? Let me not lie now. And each time when I look at somebody, how can I look at somebody with a wrong eye? Because I am a Rama Bhakta. How can I not say no and be loving towards my father? Because I am a Rama Bhakta. Ramachandra Prabhu's father banished him for 14 years. Yet Ramachandra Prabhu's love for the father did not go, get down even by an iota. Who am I to judge my parents? Who am I to judge my father and mother? Let me love them unconditionally because I am a Rama Bhakta. You see, that's how people get transformed.